Salut toi! Hello from sunny Swedish Baltic seaside. I'm in this wonderful location. I was planning on releasing this week an art music video with a song from Ines' album and an art project related to the environment in Brittany. Unfortunately, I ran out of time, mostly because we caught a bag on the travel and it sort of messed up with our schedule. But then I also thought it was about time we share some of our uh, discoveries and explorations of not only Sweden but rather about Swedish music. So Jan has been learning some traditional polska and he was very happy that it was taught the same way with its traditional music in Brittany and in many other places which is repeat after me. <laughs> I went to Vistuga, it's like a singing circle. It was a first for me, so I can't drag any conclusion, except that I really enjoyed that one. So it was like a, a singing circle led by two women singing, but it wasn't led as a way of uh, teaching, but rather as a way of coming together and in the audience some of the people would uh, remember about variations of some of the songs variations of the tunes or of the lyrics or variations that were from other parts of sweden and that was super interesting to to witness i'm still wondering if we could do something like that in Brittany. our main challenge being that uh, our language being not fluently spoken by everybody, it comes uh, more often than not as a challenge, but there might be a way to adapt it. I'm thinking about it. a folk night in Falun. Falun is one of the main cities of the province called Dalarna, which is known for its uh, vivid uh, tradition, including music traditions. And we really enjoyed it and found it like both inspiring and refreshing. The first part of the event was actually a concert, like a real concert in a real uh, concert setup. <laughs> I might sound very surprised about it, but it's because in Brittany we wouldn't mix uh, a festmos with a concert. And also, in my opinion, even if you go just to somewhere where uh, there's a band playing, unless it's in chapels or in very bigger events, but small venues or like smaller festivals, if the music isn't uh, designed to be dancing music then it will rarely um, be just a concert it would rather be something that goes along with a fair or a market or some demonstration of a crafting activity or it would also go along well quite often actually with a meal and drinks and things like that and depending on the style of music, I personally, and maybe it's just me, I find it complicated to really enjoy and dive in into what's happening on stage when the rest of the audience isn't that much into what's happening. 
and again that that might be just me so just for that reason we really enjoy that apart from the fact that we really also love the, the band performing and the vibrant personality of the fiddle player <laughs> And then the second part was a dancing part, which would be more like uh, like a festos, really. We have several types of bands, ranking from like very young people with little stage experience to uh, quite famous bands with a lot of experience on stage and charisma. And again, this is the main difference because in Brittany, when you go to a festos, you you'll only have music tailored to to be dancing you wouldn't have something that you just listen to before and then one part dancing but i really like that combination and then when it comes to the music and the dances uh, one of my favorite swedish uh, sentences has just begun and polska till one more Polska. Polska seems like the holy grail of music and dances around here. Like probably our gavot, although the music and the rhythm have nothing to do with each other. But then we really loved that the bands were performing like Polska after Polska and the audience was just fine with it and everybody was happy with it. Um, it wasn't the case uh, some years ago, but it's something that has changed along the time in Britain. We will probably shoot a whole video about a guide about like the history of festivals and evolution and the do's and don'ts. So I'm not gonna get too much into details here, but uh, traditionally there would be only one dance in each uh, area and it's the dance that you would hear throughout the night. And now people enjoy to have a variety of dances from a bit everywhere. I personally, I would never mind to have uh, gavot festivals fe only. Uh, there is a famous one ex in September actually, but uh, I haven't been for a while. But it's more of an exception. Uh, now the rule being more about like a combination of plenty of dances. There is sort of an unspoken rule in Brittany that if you have just performed a gavotte, you wouldn't straight away perform another one. And even if the bands are switching, the same unspoken rule says that if the band before you played, for instance, a ficelle, then you will not play a ficelle unless you have a reason for it. It's your last song and you and you really apologize so i love polska i love gavot <laughs> <coughs> so stay tuned i'm probably gonna come back to the same location here to edit my video watching this beautiful peaceful view over the baltic sea stay tuned